Wait, what? Hush, 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 hush. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is the Acting Real Talk panel, so if you came for the Acting Real Talk panel, you are in the right place. Um, just to kind of brief you guys on what, what this panel is, um, this is, who in here wants to become an actor? Or is an actor? Raise your hand if you are one or the other. Hey, <laughs> maybe. Um, cool. Uh, this, this panel is more geared towards acting, or um, asking technical acting questions. Say that ten times fast. Um, so for those of you that are interested in learning more about the voice acting industry, the film industry, um, theater, anything like that, this, this is less of a us talking about characters that we voiced and more talking about the industry as a whole. So, um, and all of us, you have, you have four people up here who all have very different experiences that happen to wind up in the same place. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, feel free to ask questions to us individually, us as a group, us in pairs, Thanks not so at much. all. That's, that's very kind of you. You're welcome. <laughs> Good <laughs> intro. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, thank yes. you. You're I, welcome. I don't know that any of us could, could have done that. You clearly have. Well, no, and that's the thing. I just wanted to, to make sure that it, I wanted to distinguish it from just a general voice acting panel. Like, this does have a, a focus. So, um, so I wanted yeah. to know personally what it was. Okay, so cool. Well, no, I hope I'm I informed you. You have informed me. <laughs> I've have you learned something today? Yeah, I, Are you already, educated? yes. Oh. I've learned a great deal today. Oh, I've done my job. Um, Thank you. That's yeah, our first fine. question. Oh, good. Okay. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Uh, prior to getting into voice acting, uh, did you come from a different uh, uh, acting or recording level? Who up here came from theater? <laughs> did, did you cut like radio spots and stuff, and then you had a scout? And, Actually, uh, Kyle Kyle Abear, who's the voice of the narrator for Dragon Ball Z and also and Adult Gohan, all sorts of stuff. He got his start as a as a DJ, as a on, on he was on one of the local Texas radios for a while, and that's where he got his start. So you can, you can make that transition as long as you have a, a decent. If, if you have experience using your voice and also and just in performing, that's a solid start. Like that, that's still a better that's still a better foundation than having no experience whatsoever. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I started I think with. It, it can go both ways. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think you have to start out with one and move to the other. I think it could go both ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, and acting, regardless of what form you are acting. For, like you know <laughs> voiceover films uh, stage I mean it's all it, it may have a different style and it may have different um, it, you know just, th there are different aspects of each but at the end of the day they're all part of the same craft so um, you know if, if you're a film actor there's nothing that should stop you from wanting to do voiceover or wanting to do film. If you're a film actor there's nothing that should stop you from wanting to you know it's, it's all in the same family it's just that it takes you know, different. It's it's a different style of acting, or or it um, you know, voiceover only requires your voice, whereas stage and film require the use of your entire body. Um, you are seen as opposed to just being heard. And um, so yeah, but no, I mean you can if you can do one. It, there's nothing that should stop you from doing the other. Kind I just of, so. always wondered where like the talent. Oh. Thanks, Vegeta. <laughs> well, that's a little freaky. <laughs> uh, and he's got a bad man shirt on. Bad man. Bad, bad man wear pink. Yeah, they do. Um, in my experience, uh, I'm not interrupting anybody. Am I? No, no. All right. In my experience, it, it, you, in order to make a living, based in Central Texas anyway, um, you kind of need to develop a, a proficiency in all forms, um, or it behooves you to, in order to, you know, I guess, stretch yourself out and, and eat and pay your rent or mortgage or whatever, uh, put put food in your children's mouths, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, at least that's been my experience. Agreed. Um, agreed. Yeah, Concurrence all around. Concur yeah. Concur uh, concur uh, I get like, and, and it doesn't necessarily, in, like, even to like getting into voice work or coming from theater, you don't necessarily have to have had, say, experience in professional theater or anything like that. Um, all of my experience before I ever got, before I started doing voice work professionally, was just community theater in my little small town in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Uh, did that on and off from, from the time I was five to the time I was 15, 16. And uh, granted, I probably would have had a lot, I would have had a little bit more ammunition in, in my gun, so to speak, if I had actually, if I had taken some classes or if I had tried to uh, 
like tried my hand at some professional theater first, but and I, I might have it, it, voice work might have gone very differently for me. But as it stands, it it still it turned out pretty okay. I'll sit. <laughs> and how? <laughs> Other questions? Yeah. So it sounds like if you're if you start uh, in some sort of theater acting and you are from Texas, you probably. Be <laughs> well, that's where most of the, that's where a lot of the anime work is right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the kind of holy trinity of, of voiceover in general is New York, Dallas, uh, and Los Angeles. But that doesn't mean that those are the only places you can go to. I just saw the comment. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, no, we just all happen to be from Texas. <laughs> and, and by and large, I'd say that most properties that are licensed are licensed to companies that are based in Texas currently. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, there's yeah. two of them down there. You have yeah. Sentai Filmworks out of Houston that used to be ADV Films. Right. And then so you have Funimation, who's been up in Dallas forever. Well, and, and oh. uh, the major cities in Dallas are just are huge um, areas for industrial voiceover. Like, you know, it's never true. mind animation. Like, people forget that not all acting work comes out of California. Like, yeah. you know, there are... Commercial voiceover, voiceover as well. Yeah, okay. yeah. And... Wow. Um, uh, you know, Los Angeles, I think, still corners the market on uh, film acting, but, um, sorry, explosive. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, Can we get a pop screen? <laughs> pop, pop, pop filter. People. I know. Yeah. Um, kind of, when you want to go off angle a little bit, Alexis, maybe just a little off angle? Um, no, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> but no, I, I think people really um, underestimate Texas. I mean, a lot of stuff comes out of Texas, so it's, it's a very lucrative place to work for a voice actor. Uh, you had a question. I did. Oh, could you guys talk a little bit about like the difference between the broadcasting dubs that have been happening versus like how it used to be? Because I feel like because it's you know come out so much more quickly, I don't know how. It's and we'll actually be doing a, a full a full panel on that tomorrow at noon. Uh, but do you remember? <laughs> um, I'm not sure which room it's in though. I think it's panel one. Oh, it's, it's, on on it's on your neck. It's, on my neck. it's, it's in this. Room. Uh, yeah, well, room. Room. At noon, yes, that's where we are right now. I feel now. like we're in a really little table before. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Uh, I feel like a giant. Hello. Yeah, but, but yeah, just a general rundown of traditionally, or like for, for years and years and years before now, before this huge, amazing digital age of streaming and ridiculous speed, uh, we would generally, uh, for a DVD release or a VHS release, we yeah. would generally record. Uh, anywhere from three to six episodes of a show at a time. That would take you over the course of generally about a month and a half, like a month to month and a half, maybe longer, depending on you know your budget and who you have to work with. Uh, and then it would take another month or so for them to not only mix those episodes, but then print them onto the VHS, onto the DVD, whatever, print those out, put them in their little boxes, get the box art, and have them shipped out. So you're looking at generally about a four-month turnaround between from for three to six episodes of a show. Uh, and sometimes that would also take, before we even started that, we would have to deal with licensing issues, uh, and we might not even get, a show might come out in April of one year, and we not, may not even be able to start working on it until April of the following year. Uh, that is completely changed now. We are now at the point where, with broadcast dubs, uh, much like how simulcasting is done uh, for the subtitled versions of the episodes, where they'll have that out within 24 hours of the show airing in Japan, we have the dubbed episode out within three weeks. <laughs> like, so we have completely sometimes less. Yeah. Sometimes less. Sometimes we'll com we've completely streamlined the process. Uh, Space Dandy was actually so f like you need to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Space Dandy. Who's seen Space Dandy? <gasps> I love Everyone. all of you. Yeah. Well, it's kind of hit or miss. I'll go to conventions and everyone's like, but, and then I'll come here and everyone, you know, so great. Thank you for supporting that. Um, Space Dandy was actually kind of the guinea pig for all of this. Um, that was a as I'm most you in this room know, um, that was a world premiere, where it premiered in Japan um, the same time that it premiered uh, on Toonami here in the States. Um, and we were recording the episodes at the same time as the Japanese. So it, it was almost, I mean, it was just, it was crazy. And we'd never had quick turnarounds like that before. You know, like we were used to working at the, at the pace that, that Josh just described. And so all of a sudden to have these intense weekly deadlines, it was like, you know, I mean, I say this 
half jokingly, but it was like we were like threatened every time we were like, I think I'm gonna go out of town. They're like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Stop. Um, so, you know, they were terrified because we weren't used to working with that kind of turnaround. Um, but yeah, that was that was sort of the guinea pig. Uh, and because it, it was um, so successful and we knew we could handle it, that sort of led to the release of this intense schedule that we now find ourselves working with um, on a weekly it's basis. It's interesting for those of us yeah. who are not actually based near the studio. But that's right, because we're from Dallas and Jason is from Austin, right? Yeah. I've done a little drive in recent Oh, yeah, you're, you're from Austin? I'm from Dallas. Yeah, yeah. okay. Elizabeth yeah. is also from Austin. But I was just going to, I was going to say, yeah, from, from an acting perspective, it's different in that if we had, um, if we're recording on a show that's not a broadcast dub, and a director can wait until they have a few episodes and then say, okay, we need you in for nine hours. Would you want to do that in the next month? But this is like, we have three hours for you and you have to come in in the next three days. And we're like, oh, okay, I'll look at my schedule. And it must be really hard for you because coming up from, is it Austin? Uh -huh. Coming up to Dallas from Austin is what, a four hour drive? Three and a half. So, so to do that, I don't know. How do you do that every I week? Do, I don't do it do every it? other week. Every days, other week. And so. I stay for two to three days these days. Wow. These days. Say days more. <laughs> days. And God help you if you get sick. Oh, and God help you if you yeah. get sick. Or work with certain directors who make you scream a lot. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have been ruined. Any more questions? <laughs> oh, well, hell. I mean, we just had one ad voice actor that, you know, because of, because of how one director in talking. particular, like, uh, uh, had he lost his voice to the point of getting a polyp on his vocal cords and he had to go into through surgery to get it removed yes. And that was terrifying because we, we no one knew including him if it was gonna permanently alter his voice You know, I mean or We're damage it the same or, director, aren't we? Probably, probably. <laughs> We're not gonna say anything else No, okay. um, just say what his name rhymes with No, no. Just kidding no. 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 Any more questions? <laughs> one more question? Front row right here um, yeah, as far as video games go, um, I know a lot of you do a lot of video game work, and uh, I personally, I'm, I'm in New York, and uh, we get a lot of video games there. I'm wondering, how, do, how does the video game world work in Dallas, in that area? Um, do you guys find yourself traveling a lot to record video games in particular, or...? Uh well, I mean, there's there there is kind of a hub up there, like the kind of one of the only place, two places that I know of in Dallas that consistently record some sort of video game work would be Okertron, which is Christopher Sabat's studio, uh, and Dallas Audio Post will sometimes get some video game stuff. But those, that tends to be like mobile phone they games a, and stuff like that. I have a new one. It's uh, what is it? Sound Cadence. Sound Cadence. They, they do more indie uh, and like. Yeah, um, like Kickstarter games and, and things like that, but but still counts. And in Austin, uh, sorry, go ahead. Chase. Uh, in Austin, um, Midway was was based there before they imploded and, and went down, right? So, but there, by virtue of that, there are all of these guys, these engineers, these people that you know that's been their livelihood for years and years and years. So they've started their own little independent studios. Oftentimes, it's like in a back house behind their homes. Um, so I've worked on a lot of games in this sort of studio, um, actually. There are like four or five that I know that are up and run that, that have projects going nice. virtually all the time. So it's probably not something that we would travel to New York to do because if it's if it's something that's happening in New York, more more often than not, they're getting New local York. actors. Yeah. And yeah. if there's something happening locally in Dallas, they're getting local actors for that project. Uh, although I have traveled to L.A. I to, to, yeah. to, yeah. to work for um, video games. Yeah, I was going to say on the opposite coast. Um, yeah. yeah, I've I've been to L.A. Um, I started going out there about about two years ago, and um, I've only worked with one studio out there. But they they're very open to to using non locals in their games. Um, cup, of cup of tea. I love them so much. Um, but um, I've noticed though that the recording process in Dallas for video games and anime is different than the recording process in Los Angeles. And I'm I'm curious to know if it's different in New York as well. Um, but yeah, it's just. And, it, and it's all efficient, and it's all, you know, you're all ending up in the same place, but I remember my first time in Los Angeles, I was like, this is totally different, what do I do? <laughs> it's like, it's my first time here, they're gonna hate me. Um, slower pace overall, too. Well, it, it, there's so much guesswork, it's like, in, um, 
in Dallas, a lot of the games that I've worked on in Dallas, you'll at least get a visual of the sound file, and you'll get to hear it in Japanese, like if you're, oh, if you're yeah. dubbing a game. It's like, here's a visual of the Japanese sound file as you are listening to it in real time. Now, you're going to look at this screen as you record, and the Japanese sound file is above it, and you see your sound file being recorded underneath it. So you have an idea of like how much time you have left. Whereas in Los Angeles, it was like, here's a script, uh, with a line, no context, you don't get to hear the other characters, you don't even see the, their lines on the script, and then there's just this very obscure number, and it'll say like 2.0937, and that's how much time you have to say the line. And I'm like, I, I have no concept of what that even is. Right. <laughs> I think the fastest one that I ever saw was .0. Nine eight. Yep. Like, yep. just get this out. And uh, and they'll tell you like, I mean that that's the director and the engineer's job, you know, to say, hey, it needs to be faster, it needs to be slower. But that that's working so blind for me that <laughs> it's it took it definitely took some getting used to. But um, yeah. you hear that a lot in the, in the commercial realm where they're like, oh, yeah. all right, we need this line in four point two seconds, Jason. <laughs> all right, Jason, we're gonna need you to bring the heat here. We got, we only got two point six seconds for this one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, well, we can't, I, I we can't compress it. Yeah. Like, we'll just see what you can do, man. Yeah. You know, Motor mouth. Like anytime I've ever had to do like a 30 second spot for a commercial, it always the legal, is. the legal's what gets you, man. Oh. Yeah, too. And then they're like, okay, well, and they we want need that this. faster. Well, it's coming up at like 31.2. All right, let's just, uh, or like you said, it'll be like right there on the edge. You're like, well, it's like it's point zero zero one seconds too long. We need another one. It's like you, you have the pro tools. And I personally always act like I know, like I'm like, oh yeah, four point six, sure, okay. Uh -huh. like, like I got it. <laughs> that chronometer running right here. Indeed, right. indeed, man. Another question. taking voice lessons for a few years and um, I've been studying opera and I've, I've noticed that that has helped me a lot in the booth and because um, screaming was always really difficult for me and then when I got back into proper um, singing lessons instead of just you know singing in my car uh, <laughs> um, my, my teacher even said you know he, he kind of um, quit being a teacher but he decided to, to keep me on because he was like I know what you do for a living and I think it's very very important that you know how to do this in a good, healthy way that won't hurt you. And he's like, I think, you know, not only are you learning to be a singer, but he's like, I think that this can also carry over into your your, your day job. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's all the same instrument. So, you know, singing and screaming all comes from the same place. <laughs> so um, yeah, I definitely think. And you know, there, there have been shows that we've done where, um, you know, at least in, in my experience, that we have to scream and it's like, you know, push from the diaphragm, don't scream from the throat, like that's murder on your vocal cords. But then there are other shows where the directors are like, everything you know about screaming safely, I want you to throw out the window because it sounds too clean. And it's like, oh, Yeah, they want, they want to hear the blood in your voice. Yes, and like the, the animalistic, gravelly, like, you know, because when you're... Polyps. Yes. <laughs> well, if you taste blood after a session, it's not a good thing. No, it's not. Yeah, it's, and it's we bad. all have had that experience, I'm sure. Yes. So. I'm, I'm really bad. Like, I've never actually learned how to control my breath to be able to go from the diaphragm because, and like, I'll, I will. I, pretty much any time I have to do something in a lower range and scream, I tear up my cords. Like, I had to do that for just one hour earlier this week, and I'm still recovering. I haven't really had a chance at all to go on vocal rest at all this week. Again, another another kind of hazard of the increased recording schedule. If you're in several shows, or even even if you're just in one show, but you have to scream a whole lot, if you, because of the fast turnaround time, you may not have the opportunity to take the time to rest and right. recover. And that can be really, that's scary. And that's it's even really more scary. the case when, uh, like, the way they schedule me is super compressed. Right, you know, yeah. Because they don't know if I'm going to be there, yeah. you know. So, like, I'll do three eight-hour days, basically. Yep. And, you know, yeah. five well, voices in those And especially, because Funimation, before the, the simulcast stuff, we used to be open from 10 to 6. And now we're open from 10 to 10. We have daytime sessions and nighttime sessions. So you might work a 12-hour day. 
It's a factory. Uh, yeah, it's. No, actually, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put We're it. being turned into machines. When uh, when I first started at Funny, the first when uh, when I got Kenichi, my my first role, and I was still living in Houston, they were they were recording from ten to ten at that time. Yeah. And Years I, ago, that yeah, was and you can record on weekends yeah. too. Yeah. If well, they could get you up on a weekend, they'd take yeah. it. Uh huh. Well, and because like, they they had less booths. So the booths yeah. were open during day and night, and then when they moved to their new location, there were more booths, so it wasn't economically feasible for them to have the booths open day and night, but now, with this agreement with Crunchyroll, yeah. that's all grown. Okay. And, nice. like, when, when we were doing that, I, for Kenichi, I would do, I had to do, I had to come up two weeks at a time, 12 hours a day, every day for oh. two weeks. And, yeah, like, and thankfully, and Kenichi screams a lot, but, like, he's, it, 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 like, does, yeah. it, it does, it does, <laughs> but, like, he's in a, he was in a higher range, so, like, I could That's more taxing for me. Is it more for you, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it's a lot, it's a, well, well, higher range is more taxing for Yeah. Me. Higher range is less taxing for me. Like, lower range and stuff like gruff is more taxing because, like, at least for me, I push more air over right. my vocal cords yeah, when I'm true going for in some a lower. Characters, I suppose, for me. But when I'm doing a higher pitch voice, like, I cut... I, I'm almost cutting the amount of air right. I'm doing in half, and it's more of a head voice than it is a throat voice. Right. So, like, I can scream with that for a lot, and, and, like, voice that for a lot longer, and it doesn't dry me out as much. So I still have to go through, like, 40 of these a day. Right. <laughs> but, uh, which, again, best asset you can have as a voice actor is this. I that and Hulk juice. Yes. That's what we call it. It's like this, What I don't even know what it's called, but a bunch of the directors have it in their... The Chinese in their stuff? Yeah, they call it Hulk juice. They call it Hulk juice? <laughs> yes. Why do they call it Hulk juice? Is that because green? No, know, but right? I guess because it like it's a really quick fix and makes you like feel better. What color America. is She Hulk? I don't Green. Know. <laughs> Isn't there another one that's red? There's a red Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of red. Well, the, it's a Chinese medicine, and it's this disgusting, like syrupy stuff that you can either just put in tea. I don't like it, <laughs> or you can like just eat a spoonful of it. But um, uh, it's, it's a really long it's Chinese. It's kind of instantaneous relief. It if you, is. If you've got yeah. frayed, if you've got shredded cords, I mean it. But I worry though because like a melted cock. Mike has it in his. Sounds like you're all addicted to drugs. There's no drugs in it, Kate. Kate, it's all natural. That's what they tell it's you. And then they start charging. <laughs> When you come back, ten dollars. Coffee's way broke. Are we even answering the question? <laughs> Let's take another question. Yeah. I actually heard about that the first time. Was the last? The Hulk juice? Yeah, the Hulk juice. <laughs> and I had it when I was a little kid. It is a little Chinese. It's cough syrup. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's cough syrup. Yeah. And I used to get it as a little kid too. It's really sweet. So thick. It's like yeah. Thick it's like honey, thick. and it's kind of like it's right. kind of the color of those curtains, right? Yeah, really dark red. Does it have alcohol in it? That no, no, no alcohol. No, 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 sure? no I'm serious. There's no alcohol. Sometimes it just coats your throat. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, that, and that's what scares me because we're all like swear, swearing by it, but it's like, but is it just a band aid? <laughs> it's a band aid. It's like it's masking the symptoms. It's not fixing it's like, anything. It's like it's mean, like we can't feel the pain. It, that's so. it. That's it. You've still shredded your vocal cords. You still shredded them. You just like you got to keep working. So we're actually hurting ourselves. More. Alexis, you're wearing a band-aid right now. Hypocrite. Speaking out against band-aids. Yeah. You clearly support the King says band. hypocrite. But it's, but it's a Hello Kitty band. It's pressure. Okay, you know what? <laughs> um, but no, and I heard that they started making um, like hard candy for that stuff. It's like, Kyle Avery was tweeting about it the other day because he swears up and down by it. He's the one, that I think, that coined the, the term Hulk juice. Um, but he's like, it comes in candy now. We don't have to, like, eat the disgusting liquid molasses honey yeah, garbage. It takes longer to absorb the candy. That's true. You might as well just get it over with. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Take just, a swig. Like, yeah, I mean, hmm. I would melt it down if I had only a hard option. That sounds kind of nice. Yep. Oh. Next, Next question. question. <laughs> <laughs> ben Oscar. Right here. The okay. wanted show. Um, how hard is it doing accents? It's very easy. I get, easy. I get really excited when we get to do accents because we don't get to do them enough. It you depends can, on the probably accent. depends on the person too. I mean, yeah. different people and do the different accent, things for sure. easily. Yeah, certain things. Come I'm sure Italia was a nightmare because it was like all these countries that we don't think about. It's like, what does a Croatian accent sound like? But in a way, <laughs> that kind of makes it a little easier because not many people know right. in the English-speaking <laughs> world true. what exactly like an Icelandic accent sounds like. Yeah. I, mean, I guess they could listen to Bjork, but is that really representative? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Not helpful. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, with your voice acting, have you guys been able to record off location, or do you have to always go to the studio to record like? I have been able to record off location. Uh, and it, they, they, they don't like to do it. Uh, they do have a facility that we can use in Los Angeles in a pinch, but again, they still would rather you be with the director. And, uh, you know, we've got a very specific rig, very specific 
equipment. Um, but in a pinch, if I can't make it up and they've got less than an hour for me, you know, I, I can do a few lines in a local studio, or I've even recorded myself for a few lines. And if it's something like Millennium Earl, where you can't see the flaps and it's super crazy, <laughs> deep, gruff, gravelly voice, that can work. But some, you know, it depends on the project. Yeah, but it, yes, it depends on who you're who you're working for. Funimation wants you to go there because you know they can tell a difference in the mic from one day to the next. Let alone wow. if you're. You know, if you have a different engineer and they place the mic differently, then it can sound totally different mm -hmm. to a professional engineer, you know. Right. Maybe maybe I wouldn't be able to notice as much if you put the, the recording side by side, you could. But if you're doing a, a commercial spot for radio or something, you know, a lot of the actors have home studios. I use my closets, you know, so I can do little side projects like that. I just have a really good mic and I'm surrounded by clothing and um, no HVAC uh, return in my closet so I can record in there, but I can't do that for Funimation. Funimation has actually allowed me to do that, but only, you just, know. Just for him. No, 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 no Elizabeth as well. Um, you know, if we can't get up and it's like three lines, and like I said, if it's like a, if it's a voice that. They can make it work. Yeah. yeah. But they wouldn't want to do that every day for everybody no. just because they're too lazy to come in. Like he has a special yeah. situation. So, so with the money you know, was it because you were more, yeah, connection with the character at that point, or it was just like, you couldn't get there, so they were like, fine. I, I, I couldn't get there, and it, they didn't have enough hours to make it worth my while economically, for one thing, that week. Um, I also had my son, Zoli, that week. I have a seven-year-old, um, so it just wasn't feasible, and they only needed me for one hour, and it was something like, oh, in that instance, the last time it was one cue. Yeah. So, you know, like... The director sends me basically a guide track trying not to give me a line reading and he's like, this is how long it needs to be. And then I reinterpret that and try and do it in the exact same space and look at the waveform and make sure my waveform looks about the same length and then send it and ask them to let me know if it works or not. And I got an email back and said, like, it's perfect, thanks. And I mean, I, I, I hope at some point it's like that, but like I said, Funimation has very specific equipment, uh, they have very specific guidelines for uh, the recording requirements, bit rate, etc. And they use a very specific microphone like Kate's talking about. I don't know what we're using these days. Are we using Norman still? I can't remember. I see, I see it. I know. They're He's expensive here. microphones. <laughs> But fun Funimation specifically would have no interest in allowing voice actors to do it from their home and send it in because it would only create more headaches for them and all their engineers when we are all very willing to come in right. and do it. I mean, and if, nobody you're not, would, and if you're not, they find somebody else. Indeed. So they, there's really no, nothing to motivate them to... You know, they need to have that quality control. And I think it's that way with most studios. Like, like Cup of Tea in Los Angeles, I mean, if they cast me... I'm going to LA. Like I'm, I can't record that in Dallas. Like I have to go to Los Angeles and record in their studio. Um, so, and I think a lot of times too, it, it's everything that they said definitely. But I think also it's you have that connection with your director, and it, it's just you know they they can make sure that you're still staying in the voice. They can um, they're right there to give you direction in real time. Like it's. You have, you have the video? You have the video, yeah. It's, it's just, and like she said, I mean, it's just, it's a headache for everyone involved if someone is not on, on, you know, on site for, like, a really long recording session. Like, what he's talking about is different. But, you know, if you have a five-hour recording session, oh, yeah. like, no, there's no way. Yeah. I mean, that that's just if unfair you have to everyone. <laughs> views and 100 reacts, there, there's yeah. no way. I mean, that, that's unfair to the actor. I mean, it's yeah. unfair to everyone. I wouldn't want to so. work that well, way. Yeah. 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 You know, more... 90% of the time, the director is the only one who has a good uh, view and has knowledge of the entire episode, where the arc of all the characters. Because when we come in, we haven't seen the show. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the three seconds before we speak for each line. And more often than not, I don't know, would you guys agree, you don't see the episode before you come in to record it. Well, a lot so, of times it's not available. Uh, yeah, especially so, now with broadcast dubs. So yeah, you're, you're no leaning on the director to have that big picture view of this is what your line needs to sound like, and they know because they've seen the episode and you haven't. Mm -hmm. it, there's not enough time to let the actors watch a show before they record it. Next question. Well, we covered it all. <laughs> That's right. How are we doing on time? We have 20 minutes. Okay, cool. Anyone else have questions? Okay. Um, 
I was I was curious. Um, I often hear that voice actors have to do like lines for different characters who maybe have only one line and a background character. I was wondering how often do you do a character that you were maybe not signed on to, or I don't know the way to phrase this. Uh, um, very rarely. Rarely. But, I mean, at least in my experience. Are you? I'm not sure I understand the question. Are you like asking like? Are, are you asking like if if we're cast as a lead in a show, do we also do like? smaller parts in the same show yeah like you, okay um sometimes like if it's a but it has to be something totally different like if it i'm it sound different enough. yeah like like if i'm playing a you know a, a happy-go-lucky teenage girl but they need someone to voice a five-year-old boy that has like one little incidental line well that's going to be a completely different voice and he's, he's on screen for such a little amount of time that even if you recognize oh hey that's alexis it's not enough to or it's hopefully not enough to be distracting, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, I think directors yeah. try to avoid it, but if if it's not, a, you know, economically feasible to have an actor come in just to do one line, and they know that one of us can get something different, mm -hmm. then they can do it. Yeah. But sometimes they do it for fun too, just to yeah. be like I voiced my own grandmother in Psychopaths, oh, just cool. for fun. Nice. I voiced my own grandmother in uh, Get Packers. I would love to hear that. <laughs> Why haven't I heard that? You see. <laughs> and I feel like instances like that where the, the, where you can be used for multiple type of characters, I feel like that is is something that you see more often in pre-lay animation as opposed to what we do like for anime. Yeah. Uh, does, do you, do you, who does not know what pre-lay means? Okay, pre. Don't be shy, it's not yeah, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Embarrassed. Yeah, it's fine. You uh, will be tested later. Yeah. Yeah. Pre uh, pre lay basically means that uh, you go in to record before the animation is ever even done, which is pretty Animate much to you. Yeah, they get like pretty much anything. Anytime you've ever watched a cartoon over here in the states, like Avatar: The Last Airbender, anything that you know uh, Disney puts out, stuff like that, like Star Wars Rebels that's going right now, anything. Okay. Yeah, Family Guy. They always record everything first and uh, then they'll animate to it. And, and that also gives you a lot more freedom, because yes. with anime, we have to deal with pre-existing animation and pre-existing mouth movements. We can't go in and change the mouth to fit our performance. We have to change our performance to fit the mouth. Yeah, improvisation and, is way, way easier in pre yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Another question? No. Yes, sir. <laughs> so how hard is that? Like, especially since it's a different language, and the animation is already like designed for a different language to get your way of speaking to fit. It, it really. You're talking about fitting the flaps. Yeah. It, it yeah. really varies wildly, honestly. Sometimes it it hits perfectly, and you're like, wow. That looks like it's really coming out of their mouth. And then sometimes you've got what we call bad flaps or oh, odd flaps, and it's just bad like it, or they're like yeah. super metered and like, you know, but oh, they don't even fit. Like half the time they don't oh, even fit flaps. the Japanese, but yeah. the Japanese don't care about that. That's not what it's about for them, right? It's about the performance, and it doesn't matter if it doesn't if it doesn't fit perfectly, but we, we focus more on the fitting. So it can be challenging, but to say the least. Overall, um, anime dubbing is widely considered the most difficult form of voiceover because of that. Because every other kind of voiceover that's not dubbing, you're saying it in your own time. I mean, with the exception of like, you know, commercial spots where it's like, you have 30 seconds to say this, or you have, you know, it, it's, you may be timed from start to finish, but you're not timed internally, if that makes sense. Um, and so with, with anime dubbing, it is very hard because you're, you're not being able, you can't lay down the performance that maybe you yourself want to do. You have to follow the, you know, the speed and the, the rhythm of these mouth movements. Like you can't change it. So, um, that, that's limiting sometimes, and it's also kind of a, a ping pong match because we have you know the script on one screen or microphone, and then another screen that has the animation, and we're we're dubbing in real time. So it's yeah, it's kind of like uh, grab the line, okay, blah, or you know everyone kind of has their their own style, yeah. but um, and, and they're yeah. all they all have their own little hazards. Don't they? Yes, <laughs> like I tend to watch the animation, and then they're like, hey, could you look at the script every once in a while? Right. <laughs> like, I'll try and memorize a chunk of it, and I can or do like, that pretty well. But the then half the time I'll do it a little differently, and right. they're like, or like. I actually do want you to say this particular word <laughs> that you're not saying. I'm like, but look at how it's hidden. They're like, yeah, but 
it's like if it's like a it short, comes like up a later, word. so please don't argue with me. Because or a, I'm a short freaking director. Yeah. Okay, anyway. You can like memorize the line and then just like dub the animation. But yeah. then if it's like a monologue or like a giant chunk of text, like it's usually like okay, read it on the script and then like look at the mouth movements out of that's the corner of your eye. That's like the best way to do it. That's but, what I do is, for me. But every but once in a while, your character will have a, a, a mental line where they're just thinking something, but their mouth's not moving, oh, and you just get to talk. Or yeah. characters yeah. that don't have laps. That's the oh, best, no, too. Well, the other oh, thing is... Like a pan of the city as your character's talking, and you just get to talk however you want, whatever and happens. It, it's great. Have you ever noticed, like, how in in a, a lot of, like, really like, very dramatic anime, or like, a lot of animes are doing this now, but in, in generally in very dramatic anime where there's just a ton of dialogue or a ton of exposition, uh, very rarely will they actually focus on the character that's talking, or they'll sh they may not show their face. Like, they'll have some sort of artistic shot, like you said, of a pan of the city as someone's talking, or if they're sipping coffee and putting it down, they'll focus on the fact that they're putting their coffee down instead of their face while they're talking. Uh, and that, A, has to do with the fact that it, it is easier on the Japanese in terms of time frame, because when they're animating, they're generally on a, on a really fast deadline, kind of like how we are with the broadcast dubs. The, a lot of the times, they'll be finished, they will finish animating a show the day that it's supposed to air. That's how like to how time crunch it is for them over there. So a lot that is also one of the reasons why they don't necessarily care yeah. that the flaps match because they don't have the time to make them well, fit. Well, it's an entirely um, different art form. I mean, yeah, it's absolutely. What I had to tell some fans on Twitter sometimes. Uh -huh. why, did you do, why did you do that voice? I'm like, well, yeah. because I made a choice and they hired me. Yeah, <laughs> they liked it. I'm sorry you don't like it. You can tell me again you don't like it. Yeah, you can tell me again too. That's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can tell us a thousand times how we're wrong, but it's going to stay that way. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're not there to ape them. She's holding it. What is this clip? What is the clip on? Ten minutes. Thank you, Ten. Okay. Right, is there a drawing on that, or was did it a ten? You, did you write ten minutes? Or is it a really cool picture? Uh, ten MI. Cannot see that Yeah, now. cannot see it at all. We prefer it on the screen about 20 inches from our face. <laughs> Just kidding. That was a dumb uh, We are all old. No, ten I'm minutes. Not old. Yes, ma'am. We will be done at ten, though. Another question? You in the black hat, you haven't asked a question. Uh, I don't know if it's been asked yet, but have you ever met the Japanese voice actors who voice the parts you currently voice? I didn't know if you ever met them or if you... Okay. I have not. I've met... Um, I've met people on staff, uh, or the Japanese staff for shows that I've been in, like directors or animators or script writers, yeah. and that's really cool. Um, but yeah, no, I've never met um, my Seiyu counterpart. I just it's so know. fun. <laughs> Would you like to? Yeah. Surely, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be amazing. Would love to. Yeah. We should fight them. No. <laughs> as your character. We should fight them as our character. No, we shouldn't. We should. I have a feeling that they could wield those katanas a little better than me. Yeah. Once again. I don't know. Depends on the day. Yeah. Another question? So. Without dissing on anyone, which was the worst character or the most difficult character to match with the bad flaps? Or was there any particular line that you remember was unbelievably difficult? I don't know. Puzzles and Dragons has been really weird. Uh, I can't necessarily think of any particular character, but I can I, I can cite a, a very particular instance, and it happens in almost every show, no matter what it is. They will. The character will be this small on screen yeah. in the far distance, and they will still animate the flaps. They'll be this big. Yeah, They'll know. be that small. It's like a period that, that goes in and out of, of your line of sight. And, like, then, we, and then, like then we get story. final video, and it's like, wow, okay, well, we thought that was mouth not shown, and there it is, flapping clear as day. <laughs> The engineer will zoom in and, and on and on the screen so the little person becomes, and you see this blurry gray mouth going, oh, oh, oh. and they're like, no, that didn't quite fit. Like, really? <laughs> I, do, I do have a recollection of some, some difficult ones in the first season of Noragami. Um, it's basically whenever Yato got really, really freaky weird. And, um, some of that stuff was pretty challenging. Um, I don't know. I don't know how familiar you are with it, but there's one where he gets this this vase and he's very excited about it. <laughs> uh, it, it, it was it was very difficult, and he makes these weird faces where suddenly he's got like a mouthful of fangs or something. I don't know why. 
it's flapping through that. I, it, it worked out. We call those moments cheats. Like, we made it work. And we didn't take the viewer out of it or anything like that. Everybody's suspension of disbelief, I hope, was still sustained. I, um, I had to see flaps in a different way recently, because I'm used to looking at them as an actor, but um, I assistant directed on Love Live Sunshine, and those flaps, oh my god, they were so, oh, it's, it was, they were, they were okay flaps, but it, the inter what we call internals were weird, it's like, okay, well that line ended on time, but it doesn't look like that's what she's saying at all, because of the flaps in between when she starts talking and when she stops talking, and so there are times where like, as a director, it's like, that just looks so weird. I don't care if it's ending on time. That's not good enough, which happens a lot. And so I would have to go in and rewrite them, and it, like, on the spot. And I'm like, I've never had to do this before. Oh, my gosh. And that happened. And Caitlin Glass, the, the lead director on that show, was just, just every single time she was like, these flaps were weird. I tried to rewrite as much as I could. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so it was really interesting uh, because as an actor, it's just sort of like you just sit there and wait for the director to decide something, and then you just do your best to do the line again. Um, but as a director, it's like not only are you having to watch for that and catch that, but then you're having to write something to fix it and then make sure that fits. And it was just, oh my gosh, it so was crazy. So were they, were they like super regimented or, or metered? Sometimes. Other times it was like... And it was like like big like big flaps and then little tiny ones and the big ones and the little tiny ones. It drives me crazy when it looks like they like literally copy pasted the yes. same like mouth opening through, or, through the whole freaking line or like, hitches. How like, is anybody or yeah. stopping in the middle oh. for just a second? Like you're like, well, you could stop after this word. And, I'm like, yeah, and it's like now like I have shit. to rewrite that so that it doesn't sound like William Shatner is saying it. <laughs> like I have to I have to write something that justifies that tiny little hitch because like her mouth is closed. I can't just have her talk over the closed mouth. Like right. <gasps> so I have a much greater appreciation for really our directors <laughs> and our writers. <laughs> Yeah. Another, another like weird instance with flaps are like a really hard one to work with, and it's generally it, like it's hard not only for like the people that end up writing it, but for the actor to have to put, to do it. Is you'll have a character that's ha again like just monologuing or doing a bunch of exposition, and they'll be on screen the entire time, and they're they're just focusing and actually showing them talking. And the flaps will just keep on going, <laughs> but the but the say you the Japanese person. They stop. They take a breath. They continue. They'll have like dramatic pauses, but the flaps still go, and you have to fill that. <laughs> Not only that, you know. Wait, so like, they want you to be better than the Japanese voice actor? Well, we can't. I mean, in a way, well. I think it's just a different expectation. It's it's a different art form entirely. But uh, have you seen Lost in Translation? Like the sequence where Bill Murray's filming the Suntory whiskey commercial, yeah. and like the director is saying all of this stuff to him and he asks for the translation it's like this really brief thing right. we encounter that a lot too where like you know your character has this massive monologue and then when you look at the translation it's literally you know one sentence versus a whole paragraph i don't know yep. yeah. um, oh it happens a lot and a yeah. lot of that has to do with just the fact that especially like if uh, depending on the type of show the japanese language is still so has like they they still have yeah so many formalities that are that go back to the feudal days yeah. that when they're when they're speaking in what we would consider to just be pol a polite way of speaking like just to cite a weird example like I would say thank you very much as opposed to thanks yeah was, yeah well, with with formality in the English language it's more about how you say it versus what you're saying yeah right. you know like thank you very much versus thank you very much you know yeah. it's like. And Life honorifics on the names and saying the full name yeah. every freaking time, oh, like oh, Mr. Gr John Greeley, sure, sir, you know, or your Mr. Jason Lieber, sir, yeah, please, please sir. Yeah. So yeah, or yeah, having like, or having an honorific title, yeah. like giving like if you don't call someone by their name if they're your teacher, you always refer to them as sensei right. or something like that. Or right. like if, if you're, if, yeah, or if you are. The kohai, you know, the younger student in high school, you refer to your upperclassmen by their last name. You would never use their first name. And so it's like, okay, so whose first names are we using and whose last names are we using and how many flaps is that? <laughs> yep. um, so yeah, it's just very, very different culturally. Yeah. We have time for, I think, one, or, like, this says we got like. We have two minutes. I think they want to clear the room a little All right, cool. Yeah. So we've got time like for probably one or two more. How about the right. blue hair, dude? Right. Um, What's up, blue hair? So. Are you gray? I am Kamina. I just didn't do the gotcha. tattoos. I didn't do the tattoos. It's not your fault. Um, so I wanted to ask if there are any projects where you have despised the source material and how that informs your work. 
despised the source material. Or it was just awful, like the story and characters were terrible. Oh, okay. I would think it'd be harder for the director because they're there like every day, every hour, whereas we come in here and there, you know, unless we have a, a, a lead that pulls us in for big chunks of time. But, um, well, and, and it's kind of our job as the actors to, even if we don't necessarily connect to the project, like, we can't let that show in our performance. So like we have, it's, it's better to like not judge it and like find something about it that, that you know you like or find something about it that is, you know, I mean, it could be something really small. I mean, I've worked on shows that I liked a lot better than other shows I worked on, but it's, it's not, as actors, we can't judge the material. You know? I have worked on shows that I don't like, that I actively did not like at the time. I mean, but like you said, I can't yeah. like act like well, I I'm not don't. saying we don't. I'm just saying we can't like yeah. let that we be a thing. It. Yeah, yeah. I can express one now. I didn't like the Teak Princess Yuji. Yeah. And I may be offending some people, and I'm sorry if I am. But uh, oh, yeah, no, I was giving her a thumbs up. She said, "Wrap it up." Wrap it so up. we'll just end on that note. Jason hates that show. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm totally I think, kidding. I think at the end of the day, like we're we're actors, we're professionals. This is our job, and so we're just grateful to have work. You know, yeah. so there's always going to be a day where you're a character you don't want to be, or you're having a hard time, or you don't connect as much with the with the um, for whatever material reason, or the yeah. director. Sure, but at the end of the day, you know, we all have a job, and some days. This is our job, and we're grateful. Yeah, you know? no, super happy to do this. Way less stressful than so many things. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than it's better than most of my other jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all have uh, many other jobs. Well, um, thank you guys. I think we, yeah, they gave us the the wrap it up sign. So yeah, so thank you guys really so much for coming. You thank you for your questions. Yeah.